Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Let's bow our hands in prayer. Almighty and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we come in thy presence, O Lord, this blessed uh, Sunday morning, thanking and praising the Lord for your goodness and mercy in our lives, God, thanking and praising you, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives, Master and Father, even as we come with a heart of gratitude, O Master, for all that you are doing and have done in our lives, we pray, O Lord, that you will help us to lift up your name, O Master, and worship you in spirit and in truth. To this end, we commit all of us into thy almighty arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's turn in our song books at this time to song number 61. Song number 61. Will I stop it and join in the same? Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my life. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father and I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with Thee one. Riches I heed not, no man empty praise. Thou my inheritance, now and always. Thou and Thou only, first in My treasure thou art, I King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joy, O bright and sun. Out of my own heart, whatever be Turn in our Bibles to Psalms 84. Psalms 84, we're going to read this responsibly. I'll read one verse, you can respond to the next. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns so in faith, so the courts of the Lord. My heart, my heart and my flesh cry out, out for the living God. God. Even the sparrow has found a home, a swallow, a nest for herself, where she may lay, she may have her young, a place near the altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, Blessed are those who dwell in the house, house they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they, they pass through the, the valley of Baca, they, they make it a place of springs. springs. The, the autumn, autumn springs also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear, Hear my prayer, prayer O Lord, Lord Almighty. Almighty. Listen, Listen to me, O God, God of Jacob. Jacob. Look upon my shield, O God. Look with, look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather, rather be a doorkeeper in the, in the house of the God, God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good things does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy. 
it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Just look at this particular psalm. The psalmist is a, it's a, a psalm of the sons of Korah, and it talks about the desire of the psalmist to be in the presence of the Lord. You know, and he goes on to say that uh, a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Right, so this is what should be our desire for the Lord. Because throughout the psalm, it talks about uh, how God helps those who yearn for Him, who desire Him. All right? All right, the promise uh, for the week I have taken from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, a very well-known verse. And it says, Therefore, if any of us is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old has gone and the new has come. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old has gone and the new has come. Let us keep this in mind, that we are not old beings, our old being has gone and we have been made new in our Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, this is the time that we will spend in praising and worshipping the Lord, in a time of praise and worship. sing few choruses from the chorus sheet that we have. Let us rise up and sing the songs and praise and worship the name of the Lord. The first song that we'll sing is, Who is like him, the lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? Praise and Who is like
and praise him, ask Lord, this uh, blessed day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the good night rest, Lord. Thank you for every good blessing that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, the good health you've given us, Master, the jobs you've given us, God, the families of Master, children, grandchildren, the church you've given us, Lord. The house that you've given us, Lord, to live, O Master, for these and many, many other blessings, Lord. You've kept us safe and sound, Lord. Kept us away from any accidents, O Master. Lord, these are the many physical blessings, the material blessings that you've given us, O Master, which many don't enjoy. And Lord, we value each one of them. And Master, we are grateful to you for every all these blessings of God. Father in heaven, we thank you, Master, for these spiritual blessings you've given us. Enumerated throughout the word of Master. Especially in Ephesians chapter 1 of God, you have said that you have bestowed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Adopted us as your children of God washed away all our sins, redeemed us from the power of sin. And all these things the Lord you have done through the grace that you have lavished upon us. Grace upon grace is what you have given us. Father, we just want to thank you and praise the Lord for this. Lord, at this time we pray that you may create in, our, create in us a heart of God that we see, O Lord, in Psalms 84. A heart that is yearning for you. A heart of God which desires to remain in your presence. A heart which says that a day in your course is better than a thousand elsewhere. Yes, Father Lord, we pray that uh, in all these blessings that you've given us, God, we may not forget you, but rather you may be the center of our lives. 
then everything of God that we do may rotate around that of Father. Be it our relationships to God, be it our jobs of Master, be it anything else of God that we do Master, be the ministry that we have of God, that all may rotate around you, O Lord. We may know that it is you who have given it to us. For you are a God Master, even as Psalms 84 tells us that even as they walked the valley of Baca, Lord, and you made it a place of springs. The desert places in our lives, the Lord, you make it springs of water, Master. Springs that rise up, O Lord, to give us that refreshing God that we need in those desert times. In those times, God, that we are in the depths of despair or gloom, O Master, you are the one who takes care of us. And Father Lord, this is the reason we need to have that heart which yearns for you. Even as the psalmist says, O Master, in Psalm 84, that even the young ones, O Lord, of uh, the birds, O Lord, they find they nest, Lord, in near your altar, Master. Yes, Lord, we may also find a place near your altar, Lord, where we are able to see you and enjoy your presence in a greater way. Father, Lord, we know that you have given us your word of God, the word of God, Master, your, the Bible, Master. We pray that that may be our constant companion through which we are able to perceive you, we're able to see you. We're able to enjoy your presence. We're able to hear you, God. And Lord, we are able to walk in the path of God that you've called us to. And Lord, we are able to commune with you, Lord, in prayer. Lord, we pray that these times that we spend with you, day after day, O Lord, every morning, every night, those will be the times, God, that may strengthen us in our relationship with you, Master. Forgive us for our sins, O Lord, we pray. Forgive us for everything that we have done against you in thought, word, and deed. For we know, Lord, that we are still sinful. Lord, your promise for today says that you made us a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And yet, Lord, the old clings on to us. We do not let it go, Master. Lord, today we pray that the words of Paul, O Master, in Galatians may come true to us that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Help us, Lord, to crucify the old uh, nature, our, our flesh, our master, fleshly desires of God. As John tells us in 1 John uh, 2, 15 to 17, of God, that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, they do not belong to you, Master, they belong to the world. And Lord, we pray that these very things, O Master, we may learn to crucify them. As Paul tells us, the Lord, again in Galatians chapter 6, O Master, that he has been crucified to the world and the world has been crucified to him. He does not belong to the world. Yes, Master, we know that we need to live in the world, Master. We need to interact with the world. And yet, Master, we Pray that we may not become one with them, but rather, Lord, being there, be able to stand apart and make a difference, Lord, to the world. You've called us, Lord, to be the salt and light of the earth, the light of the world, a master. And Lord, we pray that that work we may do, because the society that we live in, a master, is decaying, and it is through people like your people, a master, that decay can be delayed, O Master Lord. Some people, O Lord, can be, uh, can be saved from that decay, Master. The systems of the world can, can uh, ease, O Master, from decaying because of our presence there. And help us, O Lord, to make that difference wherever we are, be it our workplaces, be it uh, where we live, Master, those we interact with. Small and big ways, O Lord, we pray that we may stand for the truth and thus your name be glorified in our lives. 
Yes, Father Lord, we pray that everything that we have committed against you in thought, word, and deed, you will forgive us. And Lord, cleanse us once again with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray at this time for uh, the church that you've given us, Lord, to nurture. Father, we pray that uh, you will show us the way forward, Master. You show us, Lord, what is your will, O Lord. Father, Lord, you know the condition of the church. You know, Master, Lord, that things are not going too well. But uh, we look unto you because you are a God of the impossible. You are a God, Master, who is uh, who can do things beyond our imaginations of God. And Lord, we let go control, O Lord, of this church and we pray that you will show us, O Lord, how to take it forward. Father Lord, we look, O Lord, to you to do what you did, O Lord, in the book of Acts. Right there on the day of Pentecost, Master, we see thousands of people coming to thy throne of grace. And throughout the book of Acts, O God, we see that happening. And Lord, we look unto you, Master, for those very things happening right here in our church. Tens and hundreds and thousands of Lord come to the throne of grace from every state of the society. Father Lord, we pray that if changes are to be made, you will show us, Lord, what changes we need to make. Thank you, Lord, for providing our needs, Lord, in the church. And Lord, we pray that you will continue, Lord, your blessings upon it, God, and we pray that your name be lifted higher than every other name in this uh, church, O Master. And the work that you have called us to do, we may do it diligently, O God. We pray, Master Lord, for the Bible school. Father Lord, we do not know how we are going to take it forward, but we look unto you once again to make the right team, O God, to uh, give us the right place, Master, to give us the finances. And Father Lord, even as uh, uh, we discussed yesterday with uh, this person, O Lord, who had come, of the need, O Lord, to develop courses of Master Lord for uh, those who are in the caretaking ministry. Lord, we are caretaking work, God. We pray that you'll open more doors of this kind so that specialized courses, O Lord, can be developed for uh, the changing situation, Lord, in the urban context of Master. Father Lord, we come into Lord our church and every member of this church, Master, small as we may be, into thy almighty arms. Every person, O Lord, who is connected to this church, you ask your blessings upon them, their families, their children, Master Lord, their work, their business as a father. Father Lord, we pray this time for the church as a whole, that you will bless it, O Master. And Father, we pray that the church may stand as your witness and many may come to know you through the church, O God. Those who are working tirelessly, O Lord, in uh, different parts of the world uh, to bring a lot of people to the throne of grace. You may bless them in uh, places of master where uh, it is hard, Lord, the soil is hard. Father, we pray that uh, you may soften the hearts of the people, that uh, the word that goes a lot to them, they may accept it to God and we may see the fruit, the harvest, Lord, in the days to come. We pray, Master Lord, for uh, the world situation, Master, even as we see it uh, going from bad to worse, different parts of the world, God, where war is going on, and especially, Lord, the Israel war with Hamas, so much damage has been done, the Russian war with Ukraine, Master, and many other places. So, Father, we just want to pray that uh, you, O Master Lord, will intervene, even in, in uh, African countries, God, so much of unrest is there, Civil war in many places. Ask your grace and mercy, Lord, upon all those places, O Master. Let your name be glorified through uh, your people, O God, and let peace prevail, O Master, in all these places is the humble prayer of Father. Yes, Father Lord, we pray for uh, those places where there is famine, where people are malnourished, children are malnourished, where, Master Lord, uh, uh, issues and problems are there because of... Uh, uh, terrorism master, floods or earthquakes, the people are uh, suffering. We ask for your grace and mercy upon all such places of fun. Father Lord, we once again commit ourselves in the hands, praying, O Lord, that you will continue to bless us and your name be glorified in and through our lives. We ask this all in the most precious name 
of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, a very warm welcome, my dear friends, to this worship service. I welcome all of you in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And our next Sunday service will be at the same time, that is at 10 o'clock in the morning, and each one of us is invited for the same. All right, we're going to sing on hymn at this time, hymn number 510. Hymn number 510. Sorry, I think uh, hymn 242, sorry, hymn number 242 is what we're going to sing. 510 is the last hymn, right? Hymn number 242. And we bring our offerings unto the Lord at this time. All right, we're going to sing just a few verses from this. The great physician now is near the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping heart to cheer. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. We'll sing the alternate verses in this verse, third, fifth, and seventh. All right, we'll rest our feet and join in this beautiful hymn. We'll bring our offerings unto the Lord at this time. Praise God from whom all blessings 
winds flow Praise Him all creatures here below Praise Him above the heavenly host Praise Father, Son and Holy Ghost Amen Yes, Father Lord, we thank and praise Him, Master Lord, for all good blessings that you've given us in our life, God, and the little that we brought to you this morning from that, pray that you may bless it and use it, O Lord, for the extension of your kingdom. Pray, Lord, that your word may come alive to us and may grow in your word, O Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Right, the uh, word for today has been taken from Psalms chapter 2. And we will read that at this time. Psalms chapter 2. And it reads, Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest He be angry, and you be destroyed in your way. For His wrath can flare up in a moment. And blessed are all who take refuge in Him. May the Lord add His blessings, the reading and hearing of His holy word. Right, last Sunday, if you see, we, uh, we learned from Psalms 1. And I had told you that Psalms 1 sets the tone for the... For most of the psalms in uh, the book of uh, in this particular uh, book of uh, genre of psalms, uh, and what is the theme? If I would ask you, what is the theme in psalms? I had told you last time. Psalms one, I said, sets the tone. How to mingle with the ungodly? A theme, main theme. That's basically what is given in Psalms 1, but uh, what is the main theme? The main theme in uh, Psalms 1, if you see, is that uh, those who belong to the Lord, they are going to prosper, and those who do not belong to the Lord, those who go against the Lord, the rebellious, they will be destroyed. Alright, so this is the theme, you know, in uh, uh, most of the Psalms that we see. Uh, if you see there in uh, Psalms uh, 1 verse 5, it says, Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Okay, but it says, The Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And the last verse gives the theme. The, way, the, uh, the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And that is the theme that has continued here, here in uh, this particular psalm. Also, if you see this particular psalm, verses 1 to 3, talks about rebellion against God. Hmm? Man rebels against God. And then in verses uh, 4 and 5, it talks about God's wrath. Okay? And then from verses uh, 6 onwards, it talks about uh, the solution to God's wrath. You know, and uh, there's a new... new uh, trend, I would say, of thought, a new string of thought that is introduced here, and that is the role of the Messiah in God's rule. Okay, that is also introduced in this particular psalm from verses 6 onwards up to verse 12, especially from verses uh, verse uh, 6 and verse 7 and then from verses 10 onwards. Now, right, so if you see the first three verses, it says, why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? Why do the nations conspire and people plot in vain? Uh, conspire against the Lord. Uh, speak against the Lord and live against the Lord. Rebellion against the Lord. This is not something new. 
It started right there in the Garden of Eden, where we see Adam and Eve, they are going against the commandments of God, rebelling against God, wanting to live their autonomous life. That's what we'll see further also. And this goes on right from uh, Genesis chapter uh, 3 onwards. It just goes on spiraling downwards. You know, uh, chapter 4, what is it about? Genesis 4, Cain murdering his brother Abel. The first murder that takes place. You know, and then it uh, goes to that extent that the world was so filled with, uh, with rebellion that God decides, uh, decides to Destroy it, uh, destroy it with uh, water, okay? And even when uh, God uh, gave Noah a chance, you know, that through you now, okay? Of course, you are the seed of uh, uh, Adam, but through you now, the nations will prosper. What, what happened? Was uh, Noah able to stand up to that uh, uh, righteous standard of God? We see that that also didn't happen. Just one chapter, two chapters later, Noah also fell and then it just goes on. Chapter 11 comes and we see the Tower of Babel, people trying to uh, reach God. Right? And then uh, we see uh, God creating the nation of Israel. And if we had to summarize the nation of the history of the nation of Israel, right from uh, that time onwards, from Genesis chapter 12, right up to the New Testament times, how would you summarize it? If you had to summarize that in maybe one or two sentences, how would you summarize the history of uh, uh, Israel? It was all against, all about rebellion, their rebellion against God. You know, God created them. God uh, brought them out of Egypt, you know, on eagle's wings. That's what, that's what uh, Exodus chapter uh, uh, 19 says. I brought you out on eagle's wings. I made you my own. The whole earth belongs to me, but you are my treasured treasure possession. My uh, holy people, a kingdom of priests. That's what he tell, uh, tells them. And yet we know that uh, uh, their history was uh, marked with uh, rebellion. Constantly they went against God. If you see one more thing here, you know, it says, Why do the nations conspire? And the people plot in vain. People plot against God in vain. People think that. Uh, if we do away with uh, certain things, you know, God will not interfere in our lives. God, it'll, it'll, uh, uh, God will go away. See, and but yet the psalmist right there, 2,000, 4,000 years, maybe 5,000 years away, says that whatever man does against God, to do away with God, it's all in vain. It's all in vain. You know, there are two pillars in uh, Spain where... Uh, this has been raised by uh, one Roman Empire. His name is, is a long name, but uh, shortly is known as Diocletian uh, Augusti, Caesar, Caesar Augusti. Right? And he has raised uh, two pillars. And on these pillars, he has written that I am the king who has conquered from so and so place to so and so place. From east to west, I have conquered the whole world. Right? That's one thing he has written. Along with that, he has also written that I have done away with the Christians who have been, uh, who have been, or uh, who have uh, been the reason for the downfall of the Roman Empire. All right? That is also what he has written there. I'll read his exact uh, words. He says, uh, Diocletian, Jovian, Maximian, uh, Hercules, so and so name. Uh, where is it? Uh, okay. He says, for having extended the Roman Empire in the east and the west, and for having extinguished the name of Christians who brought the Republic to ruin. And then he goes on in the second pillar, he says, that I am the one who has conquered from the east and the west, and also has have abolished the superstition of Christ. Okay? <clears throat> having ex uh, for having extended the worship of the other gods. Now, if you see the history, the past uh, history of 2000 years, the people who have been persecuted the most all over the world, you know, we talk of persecution now in some places, 
but all over the world the people who have been persecuted the most my dear friends is not jews it is christians you should read the uh, fox's book of martyrs in a new see that christians have been martyred uh, throughout the history in the past 2000 years the maximum number of persecution have happened against christians because constantly you know these uh, kings and queens they have tried to abolish christianity and yet my dear friends what has happened have they been able to do it they have plotted in vain my dear friends against the people of god against god himself and yet it has all been in vain they have tried to do things against god but it has all been in vain hmm? and then it says what is saying verse 2 the kings of the earth take their place and their rulers stand together against the lord and against his anointed one all right and uh, so this uh, whole aspect of uh, standing against god of plotting against god it's not something my dear friends which uh, uh uh which is kind of a one off thing it is something people do very deliberately no standing against god rebelling against god they do it very uh, very uh, i would say uh, deliberately and if you see further what do you say there the kings of the earth take the place against the rulers who gather together against and the rulers gather together against the lord and against the anointed one if you see the ministry of jesus christ whom did jesus christ bring together let me ask you that question whom did jesus unite the gentiles and the jews the gentiles and the jews all right that's uh through his ministry yes but he united those who were He united uh, those, my dear friends, who were traditional enemies, but then those who became enemies of Jesus Christ. You see, Mark chapter three and verse six, when Jesus Christ healed someone there, it says the Herodians and the uh, uh, who are they? The, I think the Pharisees. You know, they went out and they decided, they kind of uh, plotted as to how they were going to kill Jesus Christ, and traditionally. these herodians and pharisees and sadducees these were all uh, people who were against each other they had different doctrines they did not agree with each other they uh, treated each other as more or less enemies so on and so forth they would never sit with each other but when it came, when when jesus christ came they saw a common enemy in jesus christ as it says here the rulers gathered together they all got together to plot against the lord to plot against the anointed one why were they against the lord's anointed my dear friends what is the reason because they saw a com- common enemy in jesus christ and what was the what was the problem with jesus christ the problem was that if we do not uh, destroy him we will be destroyed if we do not do anything to him if we do not uh, you know question his authority and let his authority go our authority is going to be destroyed and that is the reason my dear friends you know they went against jesus christ and jesus christ explaining this parable in uh, explaining this a uh, parable in Ma- in matthew chapter 21 he talks about uh, a master who gave uh, uh, his servants the vineyard you know to uh, plant and then after some time he sent his servants you know uh, to uh, take the uh, the money from them that they had got and they killed all the people who came to them and lastly he said let me send his uh, my son probably they'll respect him and when his son, uh, the son came they did not respect him also they killed him also meaning what was jesus christ trying to tell through this parable that uh, the authority that you have whatever you are doing has been given to you by my father you are only stewards of all these things and you are treating your you have uh, you have begun to think that this is your own authority all right and uh, because of this you are you are standing against the lord and the lord's anointed 
and you are going to be destroyed for that. You are going to be destroyed for that. All right. So uh, this comes out very clear, my dear friends, in verse three, where it says, "Let us break the chains," they say, "and throw off their fetters." You know, these are these are the uh, people against the Lord. They are saying the Lord has put us in fetters. The Lord has put us in chains, and we need to throw it all off. Let me ask you this uh, question now. How would this particular verse, verse three, apply to today's situation? Are the people today saying, "Let us break their chains and throw off their fetters"? How do the people respond to God now? How do they see uh, the commandments of God that God has given them? Outdated. Outdated. Or they think that these are chains. These are chains that God, that someone is trying to bind us with. We need freedom. We cannot be put in chains like this. All right. In fact, if you go to the YouTube and you uh, see some of these uh, uh, YouTubes where some Christians have turned from Christianity, you know, and they have adopted other religions. And uh, the reason that I found in at least uh, most of the videos is that Christianity is too restrained. It doesn't give us freedom. It binds us in chains. Hmm? You can go to the YouTube and have a look at it. It says it binds. It does not give us. It does not allow us to do what we want to do. We talk about uh, uh, many of the other faiths. They said it allows us, it gives us freedom, which Christianity does not. People see Christian religion, my dear friends, as chains, as fetters. The commandments that God gives, you know, they say that, uh, no, no, why, why should we follow those commandments? What's wrong in uh, living relationships? What wrong, what's wrong in, uh, in uh, LGBT? Or what's wrong in some of the other things that people are doing? There's nothing wrong in all that. These are chains that are there and we cannot be bound in these chains. This, my dear friends, is, the, uh, is what uh, is the uh, uh, condition of the people today. It was the same thing when the psalmist wrote this particular psalm. It is the same thing today that people see, my dear friends, God's uh, ways as chains upon their lives. And when this happens, what is God's reaction? You see from verse 4 onwards, it says the Lord, in, the, the one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs. Hmm? It's not a, a laugh of amusement. You know, when a child does something, uh, which is maybe a little absurd also, we smile. Yeah, because we, think, we know it's done in innocence. But here the smile of the laugh of God is not a laugh of amusement, but rather it is a laugh of coughing, a laugh of scorn, a laugh of disdain. You know that, uh, and when God laughs, my dear friends, uh, uh, at uh, people, uh, remember that uh, one cannot stand against that. When God acts against anyone, my dear friends, it's so terrifying that one cannot stand against it. As Belshazzar, we know that he was the uh, successor of which king? Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, all right? So when he bought the uh, temple vessels and uh, uh, other things that they had bought from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, Israel, from Jerusalem, he bought it out for parting purposes. You know, they were putting uh, wine in those goblets that were used uh, in Jerusalem in the temple for uh, temple purposes. What happened? It says he saw a hand that came and started writing something in the wall. And this great king, my dear friends, you know, uh, he was so terrified that it says that his knees shook. The sarcastic smile of God is enough, my dear friends, to make man shudder. And when it comes to the wrath of the Lord, it says, as it says in verse 5, then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath. The wrath of God, my dear friends, is terrible. Let us remember that. That 
uh, as it says in Psalms 103, that God's anger is slow to arise. He's abounding in love. But when it arises, my dear friends, please remember this, that uh, it destroys. And without destroying, it does not stop. That is, you see it constantly in the Old Testament that uh, uh, God is, God's anger is terrible. You can just open to Nahum chapter 1 and verse 6. Nahum chapter 1 and verse 6. Who can endure his fierce anger? Mm. His wrath is poured out like fire. The rocks are shattered before him. Okay, right. The rocks are shattered because of his anger. It says the rocks are shattered before him. And God's anger is seen terribly in uh, Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 1 to 3. Can someone just read that? Jeremiah chapter 15, Jeremiah chapter 15 and verses 1 to 3. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight, and let them go forth. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whither shall we, whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, Thus said the Lord, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity, and I will appoint over them four kinds, four kind, four, four kinds, say the Lord, the sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth, to be and okay. All right. Even if Moses or Samuel stands before me, I will not relent of what I'm going to do. And then he says, take these people away from me. And uh, Jeremiah is saying, where should I take them? He says, those who have I have destined to captivity, take them to captivity. Those destined to death, take them to death. Those destined to the sword, you know, they are going to destroy it by the sword. And then verse 3 is very, very crucial. You know, in verse 3, what is uh, what is it saying? Can you just read that once again? The starting. And I will appoint. Over I will appoint. I will appoint. You know who will appoint? God, God will appoint. It says. You know God will appoint, and then he goes on to uh, say that uh, I am going to uh, appoint or send four kinds of destroyers against them. Declares the Lord. The sword to kill, dogs to drag away the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. We usually think of God, my dear friends, as all loving, all kind, all graceful, you know, but these are also the words that are there in the, in, uh, the Bible. And this is also the way that God acts. Hmm? Psalms 1 tells us, God watches over the way of, uh, uh, of his own people, but the unrighteous shall not stand in the uh, company of the righteous or in the assembly of the righteous. Hmm? Because they will not be able to endure the anger of the Lord. The anger of the Lord. Please keep this in mind, my dear friends, that uh, we can never take God lightly. We can never take God lightly. You know, and my, uh, my take, my dear friends, uh, or my experience in the past many, many years now in ministry has been this, that people have taken, Christians have taken God very, very lightly. Be it uh, people in the ministry, the way they handle their money, the way, the way they handle their ethical standards, moral standards, you know, I have begun to realize. Or even uh, coming to the church, reading the Bible, all this is, has been so very erratic, so very erratic as far as Christians are concerned because they have taken God very lightly. They have not understood the wrath of the Lord. People somehow have thought that it's okay. You know, ultimately God will forgive. You see, we tend to go against God, God's commandments. 
thinking that no, no, ultimately God will forgive. We need to keep in mind, my dear friends, that what God has said, yes, that's yes for us. What God has said, no, that is no for us. That is no for us. I'm going to read uh, something that this uh, person called uh, W.S. Plummer, uh, W.S. Plummer, he gives examples of how those who have gone against the Lord, he's talking of kings, kings and officials, how they have been destroyed. Right? And he says, it is easy for God to destroy his foes. And then he goes on to say, of the 30 Roman emperors, governors of provinces and others high in the office who distinguished themselves by their zeal and bitterness in persecuting the early Christians. All right. So these were 30 people he writes about. Governors, kings, Roman emperors, others high in office who specially persecuted the Christians. He, he writes about them. One became speedily deranged. Right. One became deranged means mad. He's talking of kings. One became speedily deranged after some after some atrocious cruelty. One was slain by his own son. One became blind. The eyes of one started out of his head. One was drowned. One was strangled. One died in miserable captivity. One fell down one fell dead in a manner which will not bear recital. One died of so loathsome a disease that several of the physicians were put to death because they could not abide the stench that filled his room. Two committed suicide. A third attempted it but had to call for help to finish the work. Five were assassinated by their own servants. Five others died the most miserable and excruciating deaths. Several of them having an untold complication of disease and eight were killed in battle or after having taken prisoner. 30 piece people, my dear friends, he, uh, he puts down, you know, and this is, you can go, uh, you can go and search for this name, W.S. Plummer, and he is the one who writes this. 30 people, someone got mad, someone was killed by his own son, some died by diseases, so on and so forth. When you stand against God, my dear friends, and God's wrath, it uh, ignites against you, you're not able to stand before that. He again talks of one more person, Julian the Apostate. You know, he says, in the days of his prosperity, he said to have pointed his dagger at heaven, defying the Son of God, whom he commonly called the Galilean. When he was wounded in battle, he saw that all was over for him. He gathered up his clotted blood and threw it in the air, exclaiming, Thou hast conquered, O thou Galilean. He was against Jesus Christ. He used to call him the Galilean. He used to point his dagger at heaven and he says, What can you do to me? And yet, when he was going to die, you know, when he was wounded in battle, he was going to die. He realized that it is not I who am victorious. It is this Galilean that I was talking about. He is the victorious one. I cannot do away with him. When God's wrath ignites, my dear friends, so easy for God, as this writer says, it's so easy for God to destroy anyone. He just has to lift one finger and we are no more. We need to take this very, very seriously. Something that is not preached, my dear friends, in the in churches nowadays is about the wrath of God. And more than one third of the Bible talks about the wrath of God. Let's keep that in mind. So what is the solution? The solution, my dear friends, is given by the, uh, by the psalmist. You can go back to Psalms chapter 2 from verses 6 to 12. From 6 to 12, and uh, again there are two parts in that, from 6 to 9 is one, or 6 to 8 is one, uh, and from then verses 10 to 12. And what is uh, the psalmist saying? He says, I have installed my king, O Zion, on my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations. Uh, 
your inheritance, the ends of the earth, your possession. We know that uh, kingship in Israel was uh, something that came much, much later after the nation of Israel was uh, established. Uh, what was God's reaction to kingship? See, when they came out of Egypt and they settled in the land, Joshua was there. After Joshua died, you know, God would bring about judges. And these judges would come from time to time. They were not kings. You see, when something happened, these people in captivity, God would raise up a judge and he would deliver them. So that was how it was going on till it came to the time of Samuel. And during the time of Samuel, just as he was going to retire, you know, people said, we want a king. What was God's reaction to that? He was angry. Why was he angry? He was a king. It was a theocracy. Right? It was not basically a monarchy. Israel was never a monarchy. God never intended it to be a monarchy. He wanted it to be a theocracy. That God was king. And that's why he told Samuel, Samuel, these people are not going against you, but they are going against me. Hmm? And yet the king was established. But uh, uh, what was the king for? The king, my dear friends, was basically... To do what the Lord told him to do. He was the Lord's servant. You know, he, he could not act according to his own way. You know, just as we know today, there's a constitution by which uh, the legislature acts, you know, the judiciary acts. So also, God had given the commandments, he had given the word and he had told them, all right, you are the king, that's fine, but you're not the final authority. You know, uh, you have to go according to what I have told you to go. And uh, through that also, people would come to know, my dear friends, who God is. And yet we know that uh, they were not able to live up to that standard. And that is the reason they constantly look forward to someone who would stand, you know, who would be able to stand according to the standards of God. They looked forward, my dear friends, to that Messiah who was going to come and who would be able to fulfill all the commandments that were given in the word of God. Even for the kingship, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 14, where uh, God uh, told uh, David that your, king, your kingship is going to endure forever. There also they look forward to that Messiah who would come and do it. You know? And that is where we see these verses that are written here, they were fulfilled not by any king of Israel, but by Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ himself. You see, if you see here, it says, uh, He said to me, you are my son, and today I have become your father. Was this fulfilled by Jesus Christ? Yes. Jesus Christ was the one, my dear friends, who, uh, uh, who claimed to be the son of God. Who said that I am the son of God. Okay? Now, uh, is that something that, uh, that was authenticated in some way? All right, during Jesus' baptism, then the transfiguration of Jesus Christ, okay, and then the resurrection of Jesus Christ, all right, because if you just open to Acts chapter 2 and verses 23 and 24, just open to that and see what it says there. Acts chapter 2, verses 23 and 24. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death. Because it was, impos it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Okay, it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Why? Because he was the Son of God. He was the Son of God. So, resurrection, my dear friends, proved that he was the son of God. So, that has been fulfilled here, where it says here that he said to me, you are my son and today I become your father. That has been fulfilled only in Jesus Christ. This, was based, this psalm was basically written for the king. 
it was initially written for the king of israel but fulfilled my dear friends in jesus christ you know that is why after the kingship was over they always looked forward to the messiah who would come and fulfill this particular psalm okay so that's one uh then it says ask of me and i'll make the nations your inheritance i'll make the nations your inheritance the ends of the earth your possession all right that means uh, jesus is, uh, god is talking my dear friends about uh, uh his son being the king was that fulfilled in jesus christ yes. we know that jesus christ refused kingship number of times and yet on uh, palm sunday yes. what did he do he proclaimed himself to be the king all right and uh, uh it says here i'll make the nations your inheritance is that being fulfilled in jesus christ or was it fulfilled in jesus christ i'll make the nations your inheritance you know all the nations of the world they are your inheritance is that fulfilled in jesus christ what is jesus doing now he's ruling he's ruling All right, he is seated at the right hand of God. If he is ruling, then his rule is not seen. There's so much of evil going on. What is Jesus doing now? All right, this is a very important thing. You can just open to Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. and is usually people are not able to answer this particular question that i ask they say yes jesus is seated at the right hand of god he is interceding for us uh, advocate for us so on and so forth but very one very important thing that jesus christ is doing is given here in ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9 what is said there and he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in christ to put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head even christ okay what does it mean as such this verse what does this verse mean to put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head even christ god is working my dear friends christ is working to bring everything under his feet hmm? he is working my dear friends to uh, see that all the uh, i would say the uh, evil of the earth is destroyed and uh, world is established where there is peace where there is love where there is uh, togetherness and where there is uh, uh, justice he is working towards that and when is that going to happen when is that going to happen in the thousand year reign of jesus christ the thousand year reign of jesus christ you know if we uh but there are three views to that but if we really believe that uh, it's going to be a physical rain that is there then this earth is going this world my dear friends is going towards a climax and uh, it is going to be destroyed but a new earth is going to be formed where jesus christ is going to reign and he's going to reign for a thousand years he's going to reign for a thousand years and jesus christ is working towards that and that is the time my dear friends the in the nations are going to be the inheritance that god has promised to his son will come true so again we see here that what is said here in verse uh, uh verse 8 that is also coming true true only in jesus christ so if this is coming true in jesus christ then what are we supposed to do verses 10 to 12 he says therefore you kings be wise be warned you rulers of the earth serve the lord with fear and rejoice with trembling kiss the son Hmm? verse 12 kiss the son 
lest he be angry. What, is the, what are they saying? Hmm? Be reconciled to the Son. God has given the way of reconciliation and that is through His Son and that is why you know, be reconciled through His Son. Because if you are not reconciled through His Son, the only thing that God can do for you is destruction. So we can see, my dear friends, how privileged we are when we accept Jesus Christ in our life. And we walk according to his ways. You know, his ways are not chains. They are not fetters. They are uh, what makes us bloom in life. They are what makes us uh, enjoy life. Hmm? Think of any chain that is broken. Or what we think as chain. God has put something, some boundary. You cross that boundary and you see what happens. Any. Hmm? We see that we suffer from guilt, we suffer from shame, we suffer from uh, all the things that, we, that happens when we go against the commandment of God, when we sin. God has given us, my dear friends, a way of reconciliation and that is through Jesus Christ. Let's keep this in mind, my dear friends, that the wicked are like uh, chaff that are going to be driven away. And as it says here, they are going to be broken into pieces. In verse 9, it says they will dash them to pieces like pottery. That is going to be the, the uh, condition, my dear friends, of those who go against God, those who do not accept the way of salvation, those who do not accept the way of reconciliation between them and God. If we have accepted, my dear friends, the Lord as a Savior and King, uh, then uh, let us just rejoice in this, that, that God has saved us from eternal damnation. As bottom heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your word, Master, this uh, morning, and thank you for once again reminding us, oh, Master, of uh, the fact, oh, Master, Lord, that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of reconciliation for us. Our relationship with Him, O oh God, will decide our eternal destiny. And Lord, we pray that this truth which we have, O oh Master, once again reconfirmed to us, reiterated, O oh Lord, to us this morning, we may be able to go and give this, O oh Master, to many other people. And thereby also people may come, O oh Lord, to thy throne of grace and embrace the Son, kiss the Son, so that they can be saved, O oh Lord, for eternity. This great responsibility that you've given us, Lord, we pray that you will help us, Lord, to fulfill that. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for yesterday's Thanksgiving uh, meeting, Lord, at this house and all those who came, Lord, many of them from other faiths, young people. Lord, we pray that what has been told, Lord, uh, yesterday, it may remain in the hearts of uh, those young people, Master, the older ones also, and Lord, they may accept uh, you, O oh Lord, and we may see the harvest coming in the days to come. Towards this end, we come at O oh Lord, all of us, in thy almighty arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to sing on him at this time. We're concluding him for today. Hymn number 510. Hymn number 510. All right, we'll sing... Uh, the first and the or we'll sing all the verses, no problem. We'll rise to our feet and join in the sin. Out of my bondage, sorrow and night, Jesus I come, Jesus I come. Out of my bondage, Jesus I come, Jesus I come into thy freedom. Jesus, I come to Thee, out of my sickness into Thy hand, out of my want and into Thy will, out of my sin and into Thyself. Jesus, I come to Thee, 
Out of my shameful failure and loss, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, into the glorious gain of the cross. Jesus, I come to Thee, out of earth's sorrows into Thy bar, out of life's storms and into Thy calm, out of distress to jubilant sound. Jesus, I come to Thee, out of unrest and arrogant pride, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, into thy blessed will to abide. Jesus, I come to thee, out of myself to dwell in thy love, out of despair, into raptures above, up but for a on wings like a dove. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of the fear and dread of the tomb, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come into the joy and light of thy home. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of the depths of ruin and torn, into the peace of thy sheltering fold, even thy glorious face to behold. Jesus, I come to thee. Yes, Father Lord, we thank and praise you, Master Lord, for your word this morning, O God, and Thank you for once again reminding us, Master. Lord, the unrighteous, Lord, the rebellious will be destroyed. It is the righteous Master, it is those who walk in your ways, O God, that will be saved for eternity. Father Lord, we pray that the grace that you offered through your Son, Jesus Christ, we may not only accept it, Lord, but value it in our life that our walk, O Lord, may be according to your ways and your name be glorified in and through our lives. We commit ourselves a master in thy almighty arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.